as something stands for farmers is the is the F, and I can't remember what the LB stands for. Um, but yeah, we can think of something. We can think of something. Good question. Um, but anyway, I can get you more information. But they but they sell generic, so it's, you're not going to get a name brand. I mean, I think my nephew buys from some big consortium that's one of the farmers that get together. They buy large quantities and stuff. Uh, I mean, he bought all his chemicals for the next two years already at a ridiculously low price compared to what others are selling for. And I don't know if it includes herbicides and pesticides and that kind of stuff. Or not. I'll try to get the number in from him and maybe you qualify for that too. I think oh, that's what this deal was. It's a farmer's co op. Yeah, day. I think that's what it is. <coughs> and uh, oh, I should text him and ask him. But the main thing was the roundup right now is that hurricane down in, I think it's in Tennessee, the company that makes the bonding agents yeah. got damaged by the hurricane. So they're shut down for up to over 12 weeks already. Okay. And they were eight months behind producing it already. So that, that's, well, that's one story about the, behind the roundup, is what I heard right now. So it's like a year out before they will even start catching up. And it goes with growing season. You know, where do they sell? Do they go down to South America and stuff? There's people, I mean, they're spraying around uh, every day of the year. You know, they're planting corn. We're combining and Brazil is planting, you know, pretty quick. But they aren't already for next year. I got school to do. I'm doing them Friday. The school lets out early. The kids are out at noon. And then I got one private, and then I'm done with the train for the year. Are you taking Joe out on, on any uh, of those? see if he can come out Friday afternoon. I'll be at school most of the afternoon, probably train. Even if he's just there an hour or two. But so you get acquainted with the mule and how to run it. We talked about winterizing the vehicles and stuff to have them included <coughs> in that. Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. uh, these full time ready to go? Uh, it sounded that way. So okay. Just give them a phone call and work out a schedule together. FBN? FBN? FBN. Yeah. And is this. Just those initials, FBN. Well, I mean, could try to look up Farmers Bureau Network or something. Yeah, like something that. like that. Yeah, I mean, he, um, he says it's, it's, it's a hell of a price on it. That's, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. to approve the expenses for the November 3rd trip that Leland and Tim and uh, motion by Carlson to approve. Second by Vergil. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. If you go on the website, it just FBN chemicals I plugged in and there's a whole bunch of stuff about who they are and what the products are, uh, farm business network. But I know he buys his chemicals there for the last three or four years, and he says he gets a hell of a price. And I would assume we qualify for it, you know. Let's see here. Let's see. Go on, I'll see what I can find here. Yeah, I don't remember. Piece of paper. Let's see if I can find something here. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And this is what's happening? This is FBM. Oh, yeah. FBN. Yeah. Yeah. 
Dan, as in Dan, Nancy. Yeah, Farm Bureau Networker. And if it says you have to become a member, right? I don't know what all this entails, but you can put it on there. You can qualify. Maybe it's good for farmers. I don't know. Thanks for checking that out. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Thanks for thanks for the report, Leland. Thank you, thanks for <clears throat> leading Joe along, teaching him the ropes. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> do you have a few minutes, Dylan, for so we can hear from Mr. Sheldon? Okay. Okay, Gary. You wanna? I got nothing. Well, you're just okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, answer any questions if you've got them. Okay. Um, well, the, we're in receipt of your petition that you've been circulating. We're in receipt of that. Um, Don has acknowledged time, date, all that good stuff. Uh, she's been in correspondence with uh, our state secretary. And if I want to give him an update or if Dylan is up to speed on what we've got there. Or, he Petitions as submitted by um, Mr. Sheldon over here, the, they do not comply with the county petition statute. Um, there are certain things in the beginning of the petition that do not comply with the statute. Therefore, in my opinion, the petitions as entered are not entered correctly pursuant to state law and they will have to be Okay. This was taken from the state government. That petition. The petitions that you submitted and the petition from the website vary in different capacities with the way you put it together. I didn't put it together. It came from the state. It came from the state. Like, who from the state? I, I, I guess I need to ask those questions. I would have to go back and figure out who it was. It's been a while. Uh, but I called, uh, I got a hold of the state, and that's what I needed to do. The, what to do, how to run a petition, and everything. I have it at home. I didn't bring it along. Okay. I didn't think it would be anything wrong with it. I've had lawyers check it out, and they say it was very good. Well, when I sent it in to the Secretary of State, one of the petitions, uh, they came back and said that it was the wrong petition form that was used. And that, was, that came from the Secretary of State, and that's who I go by when I'm handling the elections. So. Well, I think that's who I went to, was the Secretary of State, but I'm not talking. I don't think the Secretary of State's office would give you, you or anyone else, um, guidance on how to do petitions because their office doesn't do that, just as we have been told in our office not to do that. We can't, I can't do a petition out for somebody unless it's, unless it's a petition that someone's running for one of our county offices. So that's what I was told yesterday by the Secretary of State's office. Okay. So, so what, what does that mean then? What he has to do? He, in my legal opinion, would have to um, get new petition forms that comply with state law and have them resign and resubmit. So he has to go back in with a sign anything and have them resign it? Correct. What would be the difference? I don't think I am allowed to tell you that. <laughs> Thank you. You are a state's attorney, aren't you? Correct. <coughs> My job is to cross prosecute criminal cases and represent the county. Not the people in the county. No, my contract is, or my job is to prosecute criminal cases and represent the county. Not the people in the county. No, I can't represent any private citizen. Here was in good 
response they were calling me up to get their signature on it. I put an ad in the paper, I had people called to do this, and people called to get petition signatures. This is the first I heard that I had didn't have the right petition. Well, we I got it from the state. We wouldn't have known if you had the right one until they were submitted anyway. It's been all over. <laughs> it's the same petition that I had them sign. 400 people have signed it. Apparently you didn't look at it. I was never presented with it until today. We will take care of it. It will get done. Okay. Okay, Dylan. I've uh, taken a look at the um, proposed paperwork from First Planning District in regards to the uh, applications for the cannabis establishments. Did I send those out to you? I did recently get it. I am sorry. This week I didn't get it. I am sorry. Um, so, so this is when you do look at them. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry. In my opinion, they're they're fine. It's a standard form that first plan the districts giving out to the rest of the counties. Uh, there may be uh, a little more information on them as far as the type of um, establishment that the person is looking to establish. However, that doesn't. It won't change anything because when they come in to apply, they need to have read the um, county ordinances anyway, and the ordinances will tell them that we're only allowing dispensary establishments, not anything else. So even if they try to check one of the other boxes and apply, that's if anything it shows that they haven't read what they're supposed to have read and comply with the work. Okay, we looked at these before. These, these are brand new. Okay. From this. Okay. Go ahead. I didn't like the other ones when they weren't matching up with the resolution. So we're just copying what first district gives us. This is what first district gave us according to our ordinance. And it, so. did first district not give us previously? So, but that was not to our ordinance. But this is this. Well, supposedly, I guess I haven't had a chance to look at it. Well, the one thing that jumps out, the one thing that jumps out is that we're not, we're not ever approving uh, in the near future a cultivation facility, a manufacturing, processing, or a testing facility. Correct. That that's on there. And like I said, if somebody comes in and wants to check one of those boxes, it goes to show a that they haven't read our ordinance to begin with. So that's a strike against them to deny the application. Just because it's on there doesn't mean that well, it's kind of misleading in a way. Yeah, in my opinion, they shouldn't even be on there. I think he's trying to, uh, just made it generic. Is that kind of what you got out of it? Or? Yeah, a standardized form that, yes, it's specific to our county, but the formatting of it is shared across the county. Well, why don't we review it and come back next week and look over it? I didn't. And it, I mean, it's ultimately your guys' decision to change them. <coughs> but from a legal standpoint, you found no, no issue with it. From a legal standpoint, I didn't okay. find any issues. Obviously, we're still waiting on the Supreme Court to hear what's going to happen with recreation. Any rumors that I've heard is don't expect an opinion until winter sometime. At the earliest, who knows? Are we still waiting for leadership out of the state too with regard to medical, or is that pretty much? Well, they have until the end of this month to get all of their administrative rules ironed out and published. I think the due date for those is the 29th by the end of business. And then shortly after that, people would be able to apply for these types of licenses. Yep. So desire. Okay. Um, 
How, how would we handle multiple applications when we're only issuing two? And say we get five. I'd say the best process is first come, first serve. As long as they comply with everything. I think Sioux Falls is doing a lottery system to uh, um, we, we almost need an application deadline, maybe? Or well, then what if we get none? You know? Have you my concern is if you get several of them. Have you heard of a lot of interest in the county for it? Just that one gentleman that came in that time and he's on the end of this. Yeah, and you know, in the city of Sisseton, they're charging the $5,000. They are. I, I just, I, when I see Falls, I want to go to their website. Their application, too. They're charging an application fee. Well, I guess my whole thought was that I think it's a positive thing, so I don't want to live with people. What do you think, Cotty? Did I think was Cotty in that five grand or something like that for theirs? Someone was 50 grand. I mean, that was I think that's that, that, that was that would be a county. Yeah, but I mean, to me, if it's something that people need, why why should we make it difficult for them to get it? That's why I would for a little price, but and. With Cottington and Minnehaha counties, there's a, uh, a higher population density than there is here. Um, also, here we have, I don't know what the tribe's going to do, so I don't know how much interest there might be on a county level with the availability potentially from the tribe and the city. Because in the unincorporated parts of the county, I guess my thinking was if there's going to be anything anywhere, it's going to be along the two lakes. Because otherwise, an unincorporated parts of the county, where else would they put it? Just way right outside the city limits, maybe, to, to get us cheaper fees? I don't know. Yeah. <coughs> $3,500 is quite a, quite a big difference, I guess, in that way. It's just, uh, yeah, right. Other, other prescriptions can be sent through the mail. I don't recall. Is, can no. medical cannabis be mailed? Because it's still illegal federally and the USPS is a federal system. Okay. Okay. I'm all for it for people that need it, but I'm already hearing people talking that they're going to go to the doctor and they're going to get it and they don't really need it. Um, I just hope doctors are, our providers are yeah. close to this. Like anything, there's possibility for use and abuse. Mm -hmm. Just like anything in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apart from those two things, uh, it's an update. Uh, I believe the highest number of class one misdemeanor and felony filings that Roberts County's ever had in here, somewhere around 830. Um, I think I have 780 something up here this morning, and it's the first full week of October. So, so we make the first just as well. <laughs> Don't get sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When again, when are you going out to the, to the universities? Uh, I have sent information to the USD. Um, the first bar newsletter um, since I sent in the job posting came out yesterday. So I think I'm too busy. To, I've been too busy lately to get a call in the UND or Mitchell Hamlin to get my information to them. So I'm too busy to find my own help. So yeah, I, I, see, I, did I, you have any site track on someone that might be interested? Or? I did. And the day that I offered him the job was two days after his wife got a big promotion at her job in Sioux Falls. So, so he's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the possibility of a, a part-time in the interim or not if, even, or? If I can find somebody. I mean, if it would it help to run an ad for a part-time person <clears throat> within our newspaper systems? or I, I, I'd like to wait a little bit yet before I start going there around to see if I can find somebody sure. part-time first. Because yeah. there, there's more than enough work to keep two people busy for the hours. Yeah, I was thinking it was, yeah. Because I think all five days last week, the earliest I left the office was quarter to seven. At the earliest, and last night was about the same. So um, I'd like to get someone full time. Um, 
obviously if that can be done in the next couple of months, I'll start advertising for part time just to try to get some of the load off. Even if you could find a part time, you would look just this is temporary. And if you could find a full time, you need to make that temporary person know that it is just temporary. And right. You got to find a full time person to be gone. But. Um, and <clears throat> I had a bill submitted, I think last week. Um, I bought a laptop computer, a microphone, and a couple of extra yeah. hard drives. Um, obviously, two hundred and thirty dollar laptop isn't anything special, no. but I got it to um, use for grand jury proceedings. Um, pursuant to state law, they either need to be audio recorded or transcribed with a court reporter. And um, usually, I have uh, Miss Mysteric uh, court reporter for me. Obviously, there are going to be times when I need to have a grand jury and she's not around, so I bought that equipment for that purpose, um, as well as storage of whole body cam footage and cam footage. That's what the one terabyte hard drive is for. Just wanted to give a quick explanation for that. It came through last week in the yeah. so. I noticed Kay was helping you yesterday, and yeah. uh, if you know, feel free to use her as much as she wants to, to be used. Well, that's just the thing. I, I feel bad uh, sometimes asking her company to help because obviously I know she's put in her time. Right. Um, she was here for a case that started in 2018. Sure. I know next to nothing about so sure. I asked her to tag along uh, on every stretch of the case until it's finished. Um, she was going to be in this week to help me with the jury trial that was starting Thursday and Friday, however, there's, that trial's not going to go. That's why we came to an agreement yesterday, so. Good. Good. I don't think that's your problem. <laughs> it seems to me there should be a lobbying for a law that says if it's the same old situation when they, you have to prepare, 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 wait until time you go to court, and then they last minute say, no, I'll take a deal. Well, shouldn't there be some kind of a stipulation that says you got so much time to take a deal after that, you're going to that, court whether you want to or not? There is. Um, in the <clears throat> pretrial orders, the judge usually um, cuts off. Plea negotiations must be completed by the Monday procedure of trial. Uh, still, you, you've done all your work up to that point, probably, right? Or a large part of it. But it's also my job to prepare every case as if it's going to go to trial. Yeah, but I mean, it would make your work a little much easier if they just said you got X amount of days to take a plea deal or you got to report. It, it would, in a sense, but it would also limit me, in a sense, because there are changing circumstances as the case remains active. Okay. I won't really get into it, but. Okay. Well, it could be nice and that. You do that thing. You do that after. That's yeah. Kind of like, that would take away your responsibility. Right. Um, apart from any of that, do you any of you have any other questions for me this morning? We just got the dispatch contract. And we haven't discussed this. Um, I, I question, it says this contract shall run from the date of signing until December 31st, 2022. Do we not want January 1st, 2022 in there to, until? Well, I haven't we agreed to make it 20, yeah, right, January to, yeah, I got that. Calendar, calendar year. Second thing. So, where are, you, where are you at so I can have all the laundry? Three. On what? On the dispatch contract you sent us yesterday. Yes. Number three. Okay. This contract should run from January 1st, 2022 to, or until, December 31st, 2022. Yeah, that's in the in the page number six. That's on page number six. Number six. Okay. My, my other thing was, uh, unless I missed it, number four, the city may be sent and cancel. <laughs> you know, do we not have that same right? <laughs> yeah, probably should. You know. Those are my two issues. Unless I missed it, I didn't see it. So on number four, they call me. You know, you have that same. Well, that wasn't in the first contract. That's why I just modeled it off of this one. So. I don't see both either parties. 
Yeah. 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 That's the only two things I saw. City or county? Yes. Or, or just put either party. Either party. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, appreciate it. I, I did not realize your son was a teacher in Webster. I did not realize that was your son. How would you get to drop out? My mom works at the school. Oh, okay. And she, she asked me if you'd ever made a comment about it, and I didn't even know. No. I'm like, it never came up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you do it out? Thanks, Dale. Good day, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, we are at a place in the agenda for bid opening of the public defender. How come we have Grant County? Oh. But see, they only got three deputies plus the sheriff. Three deputies, total of four. Yeah, we had a total of six, five deputies plus sheriff. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, uh, comparing every county. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, I only figure yeah, I'm we're, not, you know. We're certainly one of the bigger counties around. Yeah. Mile well, I mean, we can give them more money if we didn't have so many. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'll get both sides of that. Ask Tyler about that. I don't know. What do, what do they have to do? Well, the Grant County hauled them from mental health. Yeah, the transport. <laughs> oh. Mileage and labor. Yeah, I was I was getting complaints about the large gathering of people at the wharf. And uh, I, 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 I called well, I probably a thousand people there, you know. Thirty six hundred last week. Oh my god. That was one that, that, you know. That was yeah. supposed to be the one that Tyler had asked him about it and um, he said, Well, uh, Dylan Bean, Deputy Bean, is on his way down there. I said, Well, there's a there's a big crowd and they're they're on guys' property that shouldn't be and they're plugging up other businesses and stuff and I said, can you ask Grant County to come over and help with somebody? Well, I hope we can get a bill for that. Because isn't there a thing called mutual aid? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it should be. You know, I think. And so, yeah, I good think point. He, now when you're yeah. talking about that, you know, when they arrest that woman, you guys maybe see him right on paper on the interstate, a woman from Sitka and stole something out of it. Oh, I just did yeah. Anyway, but we had a they, I have me coming back from work on that, baby. At parts, and I thought, geez, that car passed me, right? My right here stops, I mean, poor guy. Well, I'm gonna make a long story short, one of our deputies was heading down way by Twin Brooks exit. So, where do you do it? You know? <laughs> Why do we do it? You know? Yeah, right. right. Uh, I don't know, I guess I'm gonna ask him today. Yeah. First of all, if they showed up, I don't know if they showed up, I did get a call from them the resident on Thursday thanking us, me or whatever, for sending some law enforcement there. I, mean, it was, I heard it was this being there, what I heard, but I'm not, not. That's probably it, yeah. I'm yeah. not, yeah. you know, deny, I mean, <clears throat> the boss's kid went down to it, see what he was in buying tickets. He, he said it, that it was so full that vehicles were lined up on the highway and there were Young people with four wheelers giving rides for five dollars to get oh, from, to get from the vehicle <laughs> down oh, to where the drawing was being held. Is there anything you know that to have something like that? You know, it's large problem. They need a permit or something. Anything in the state statute? Anything to protect? A third of the money went for cats walk in <clears throat> Melbourne. Twenty percent stayed with the war from the west of the is what they tell me. To whoever won. Okay. But when they showed me a video, it looked about like Sturgis. <laughs> I mean, it was full. It was like, I mean, it was so small, but it, you're right, it went way down the street and back up the line to buy a ticket. Yeah, there's no place to park it at the wharf. <laughs> no. I mean, at this. 
Yeah, they, so you they, heard the same thing. They yeah. need a different venue if they're gonna well, do yeah. something like that. That's gonna attract three thousand. Well, another one now. They start doing another. Every Sunday. Yeah. yeah. What are they doing? Chase the Ace. Chase the Ace, and that's for the baseball. Right. Baseball mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been to that, and I. And I Talk to the organizers about it, and yeah, they don't exactly. ever plan on having it get far out of hand. Maybe even control it to the point where I don't. I, I don't know if they if they charge more for the tickets or what. How it got to be such a huge yeah. horse. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the chance sure that everybody's in it all of a sudden. It draws a hell of a lot of people to bars. <laughs> Was it yeah, they had a big one too. Yeah, yeah. They had a big. That yeah. was a big yeah. thing, and kind of sounded like you could purchase your tickets online or something. Yeah. 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 Well, Helen. Uh, oh shit. Yeah, I'm so bad at names. All of a sudden, it was down in the lake. Oh, Helen Seraki. Seraki. She won like twenty nine grand off that Chase the Ace thing. So it was a secondary prize or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she was I don't know. Well, as long as you're a non-profit for charity, as long you, as they're you doing, can, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. we went to the comedy. Well, sit on that. That was really good. Cool. Yeah. See, I was wondering if that's the one that, that we got here that they totaled out. Yeah, so they gave, I was, they gave us a car, and then we totaled it out. We had to keep the money. We were celebrating our first anniversary, so they went to Fargo. And the day that was, was, we kept the week. Yeah, but it was apparently because he said he was going to pay it. Yeah, this goes back to 7-1, so. So what's that? Did well, this email you gave us about the, the money for the car, is that the white horse was out there we got from Rossold? Yes. And then there's so, a bill here for insurance, that's previous to this point. Yes, because okay. I didn't have any of the paperwork. Yeah, so we're working on the insurance. They're going to cover us oh. and then they're going back because I, I just actually got the title. And I got the title is now in our name. So if it's if if them totaling it out and getting that eleven thousand seventy two dollars and fifty cents. That's not the end of the day. Well, I. No, I know it's yeah. it, it, no. it's nothing nothing on your part, Don. But no, but I mean. And first of all, it's a Crown Victoria. It's not a Taurus. Oh. <laughs> it's a Crown. I'm sure it is. Uh, well, that a different car Are you sure? Well, the, it was the what Ford was Police sedan was on the title. Was? Yeah. I wonder if it's the same one. Is it the same one that's wrecked out there? When the came way out and had a little airbag blowing and sitting on the far side of the parking lot. That's what I was thinking of, yeah. It is, right? I guess I'd like to know if Russell wants to give it to us or not. The title being in our name, should there have been a transfer of the title? She's got the title. I just, okay. Got it. okay, so I got the title late because they couldn't find it. Okay, so I got the title, I had it transferred into our name, and then all this other stuff was going on. Um, the, guy, the guy came up and he pulled it up. So that's why we got this bill that we need to pay so we can yeah. have it totaled out. And I haven't talked to Tyler about um, what kind of equipment is in there. Yeah. So is it okay if we do it that way? If I sign the paperwork to the declared? 
Yeah, we net out 10 grand. Proof right? of loss. You know, there's, there's a, that whole thing is, I think that's part of the agreement that Claire made with Tom Rossell. That's part of the payment of the car. Where's the, how much is that worth? He said it was worth, he, he told me 5000 when I, you never going to pay fourteen thousand insurance. Yeah, about ten, 10 after the deductible. That's definitely a thing to miss. Well, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm surprised Public Assurance Alliance is making good on that. And was it? I said it wasn't. It wasn't listed on our policy. Yeah. It's been past 30 days since, since we've taken possession of it. Hey, B. These are. Hey, guys. Hey, Do you want to proceed with that or not? I don't know. If I were to tell also, I would be very happy that you didn't buy a credit for me, but 10,000 insurance. Is that what they call a gift horse? Uh, Is that what they call a gift horse? Uh, strange, strange things are done. I, I was reading in the Marshall County minutes that they traded 30 or 35 days of jail time to Day County for a car. I know it. Horse trading is alive and well here. Yes. Can we think about that for a little bit, Don, before we make a decision? Well, yeah, <clears throat> I guess. Yeah. I, I... Um, yeah, before we move on, uh, we have one bid for public defending. You probably know who that is, Mr. Duty. And he has bid one hundred and thirty-two thousand, and uh, he's offering that at a three-year contract from January 1, 2022, to December thirty-first of twenty twenty-five. And he's submitted his documentation of insurance. Doctor, the student told us he was going to bid, right? Yeah. And he didn't come off that. <clears throat> Is it time to review his lease? Anytime between now and now. I mean, if, if, I mean yeah, first, uh, first, first, first of the year. I understand why his costs are going up and everything. I, our costs are going up as well, too. Even that for $200 a, a month can include utilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's pretty like unreasonable. No, we can, we can certainly raise raise them. I mean, know, I don't want to gouge the guy. I mean, he's by the doing us a service. But I mean, I think we should be able to get something a little bit more realistic. Because he is utilizing two offices, actually. Two and a half? When he... Start with? Three. Yeah, I think it's free. Three hundred. Three hundred, yeah. Let's go anyplace else and we'll get it. Probably utilities. Well, maybe that's something we need to visit with. The other Who else is in there? That Gina Worker. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. What she do? She's the one that work? works for the tribe. What do we charge? What do we charge? One seventy-five for that tiny office. So. Well, I'm just saying. He's right. electricity. Come on. Yeah. yeah I think well, we could. Yeah. We'll look, look at all the first years. Look at all of them. Yeah. So let's. Well, probably December, but it would be effective January. Sure. So, yeah. uh, November. So you gave me yeah. 30 days notice. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because it just was, you know, two of that actually are paying rent. The other ones are utilized by the companies. So. Yeah. I'm going to motion on Saturday. Okay. Motion by, <laughs> motion by Zempel to accept his bid, 132, second by Brigel. 
Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Oppose? I oppose it. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, they said they have no problem with it. They 
If there is a problem with those, when the wind blows strong, it'll lean back a little bit, it'll stretch, it'll stretch a little bit, and the paper will tend, have a tendency to go climb up that fence. But that's his only issue. How takes the weave? Two inch by two inch. Uh, this is the same company then, that's the same I product. Don't know. I'm waiting to get you back from these guys. They said they'll all give me an email of where they got it, what they cost the damage. And that would go on the, the portable that would catches. Go on the port. not, that not, on. not the stationary one that you're gonna be that will, that's an alternative uses. Put that one on the stationary things too. Oh, okay. So is this ninety six hundred Including the stationary fences too? Yeah, that $9,600 is a stationary fence. The, it would be another $4,000, for the cages. You went to the That's not too terrible then, yeah. We heard on the, on the ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We probably need it, but it's just like, when we do a project, we not think of the total thing, it's just like, after Okay, I'm going to throw it all out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you install that? 
better you get something to install it on the. I don't. I don't know if we're man equipped to you know the three of us part timer to do this and take care of the landfill. Yeah, I mean, what else would you do? You think? Uh, well, we we talked to that guy like, out there with that uh, uh, Travis Bruce. Yeah, we're back with Martin. Yeah, from down that way. And he's the one who's telling me there's no way you can get quite a little bit right now. Chris uh, Reese. And uh, whoever he did here, I guess. Put Kiss contract with someone else. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you get a price from him on labor? No, not on this stuff. Um, I, I, before you came, you know, that's what he got to say about it. You know, but now I'm, I'm waiting for you to talk to these guys again to hear from Scott Steele and Wall with the call what they're using. Yeah, it's the exactly. same same product of yeah. something that's not inferior. The guy that said just for that, how can you get so healthy? Well, it's so strong. The wind cool. the wind stuff is breaking my ball to work. Pam just posted oh, over there. Yeah. If I get more information. Yeah. We, uh, 
be at Pat's here too. We talked on Thursday about the uh, the tire yeah. on the last straight for a I had made a phone call to <clears throat> Beezer about potentially bidding on that used one that was going up on the mill by auction. He says, well, we've already got one. Now yeah, we're going to re re replace it. Dr. Bates over there, uh, Mark had one at their place. Mm -hmm. uh, and okay. that we had to put on the machine already. So. Yeah. What was the cost of that? 300 bucks. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Cool. Should have bought two. Yeah. Well, he had a good one that he didn't want to sell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's they did us a huge oh, favor yeah. there. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be back. We'll be here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Minute break, please. You guys can go ahead. I'm going to vote no on that. <laughs> what did the rest of you guys We're on a three minute recess, Pete. It happens every time you show up. I don't know what it is about you. Yeah, I see Beezer's here, and I ain't no one Beezer comes. I had to wait. Oh, I better run now. Thank you. Okay, so this is the first one. It's a good week for working outside today. This week, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Another six months like this. Wait, next week will be decent. It's 60 or something. That's fine. Yeah, we're supposed to be nice for a while. Yeah, nice mm -hmm. is going to warm back up again. I saw in the news. So. Yeah. We got a lot of work to do. We don't want to get yeah. shitty yet. Yeah. He's on the lake road here. The power company really cleaned off that one side of the. Yeah, we used to do it all the way yeah, on both sides. Stay thin, yeah. Save us some hassle. Boy, the guy was telling me about they got like a little, one of the little uh, track holes, like Goodhart's got, he's got a big old power blade on the thing. You can twist that thing around and cut branches and stuff. Yeah. And chop up these trees like nobody's business. You get them, you know, like. Like tiger mowers, where we yeah. get mowers, and they got the boom where it extends out where you can mow around the back side of the, sure. the um, bridge rails and that was mm -hmm. before, and you know, I didn't get them to so like you say, come up like this. Yeah, and just right yeah they just, yeah. Just, yeah. 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 You know, they, they, I don't know how many days you're on that lake road. That friend of mine, Leonard's on there. They, he's got some holes to go through his yard. He said they spent two days working through his property. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how many days you're on that road. I mean, you know, the whole thing is about a couple, three miles. And yeah. how many miles do you have to do with that stuff? Across the nation. Yeah. They cut all the way west up the hill, too, where the pool holes go through that. Some, there's some, someone contracted with the power line company. Right? Yeah, with power company. Yeah, we yeah. did contract a little last year. You know, I did yeah. some. Trimmed up so that worked out pretty well. You get one company at Sioux Falls and one out of play Alexandria, so they're all just around, you know. But there's a couple guys come out of Browns Valley. Well, I, I, they come out of water, I mean, they work in Browns Valley quite a lot. Okay. I see the trucks in there now. But, uh, yeah, they, yeah, I see the trucks sitting by the valley there for yeah. days and whatnot, but yeah, I know. I wish Tease would be stupid. I went all the way Yeah, we did. That would have been great. <laughs> 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 the wire on the other side. No, that's a Under, underground, but yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they make it look pretty easy. That bike. Oh God! What's no? I haven't got it put away, but I'm just. Yeah, I don't know. So I have to have this summer, so. You got three boys playing football every Morgies. weekend, and yeah. and all of them. three of them are playing tonight. Wow, the two little ones are back in the night, and then the oldest one plays tonight and the next week. All in town. 
Yeah, tonight it's out of town. Yeah, so otherwise you got to run all over. We went to Fargo Morning on last two weeks on a Sunday. Yeah, my God, it's traveling. That's why, I mean, I, I know I go if, if Louis' boys got in, but yeah. I hope they don't get in there, because I don't really want to oh, go. They get into that, and it's traveling all over. Oh, you know, but yeah. it's not as many games as yeah. <laughs> Well, they started doing the wrestling a couple years ago, and that's that's what I hear that they don't do hockey around here. You oh, God, hockey, yeah. And that's more expensive every weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. They travel a long ways. Yeah, they do. Yeah, we usually used to go to the a lot on the long weekends, and, and or not long, just regular weekends. Every weekend there's a, a hockey oh. team up there you from the cities and stuff for tournaments and such. Yeah, it's it's tough. You get over there less than more less than more than they got that brand new facility yeah. for hockey, don't draw. So you went on, you went on for breakfast. You got forty-two little hockey players running around causing problems. You don't want to be in a place that's got an elevator. We have to have six floors or something because they're making right now. Yeah, it's either that or it's basketball tournament. Yeah. yeah, it is crazy in that town. Yeah, that's like every bit of town, even like Aberdeen. Oh like, sure, I bet it is. First all traveling team with the school bus. Yep. Checks that have to be done yet with the state, and towards the bottom there's one for deposit for 829.31, and then the bottom one is 845.58. Those haven't come in yet. <clears throat> we have to get those yet so that we can pretty much wrap up the bridge stuff. If you look at the bridge stuff in the back, I don't know what's on here. So, right here, this 168,000. 2324 is kind of where we're looking at where my balance should be when we're all said and done with that, with that bridge money. Yeah, yeah. 
that first allocation, that four hundred nine thousand dollars, you know, is how it started. Mm -hmm. And then we took our twenty percent, and then the state paid us the eighty percent back on that. So technically, when we get all said and done with that money coming in with those other two checks from I made and stuff, then we can, you know, hopefully straighten that all out with the bridge stuff, and we should be around one hundred sixty-eight thousand as a balance. We'll get all done. That's not what we got. So, we, we have she's been getting left. all the checks. We finally got that 131000 in a couple weeks ago, and that, because some bunker got messed up, so it was like two weeks after, three weeks, it took to get the stuff. But mm -hmm. so, so, do, do we have one more year to spend that bridge money? Or is it yes, we have so another year to spend, spend that $160,000. No and these two zeros down here is because we did this Ellingson bridge, took it out, put culverts in. I would probably talk about doing it already, which we did. That doesn't come out, then our state don't pay us that back. Okay. That just comes out of this general money. Okay. So that's why there's zeros there. So technically, that's kind of where we're at with that bridge. So, so then back to the front page again. Then. So we had 360997 as a balance. And if you look at the next three months of revenue, we should be around, um, the total should be about $727,000. $730,000 in, in balance right now to the rest of the year. <clears throat> if you have these, what we have coming in, and then what our balance is, that's what it is right now. Now, if you look at the second sheet I give you of this balance sheet here, this here sheet shows the balance. Of what we start with September now, and then I got payroll, salt, sand, fuel, utilities, fuel, propane, oil and the bills for the rest of the year, and then the asphalt that's outstanding to, to date right now. So if you go down here and look at what I got here, that's just kind of projections of the rest of the year for my bills, and hopefully we're gonna have, you know, probably 100 or 200 in the good year towards the end, which I'm looking at. Hopefully the discussion I wanted to bring up was to get something going with some gravel production for the next year. If we have any kind of money, you know, that looks good for the rest of the year, I'd like to try to get some gravel crushing bids and get that going. They're always good for a year, but I talked to Cody. He didn't know if he'd be able to get up here this year to the north, but he is in the IMG pit. You know, they do have a lot of gravel there. But we need to desperately get gravel crushed for the north end and towards the south end for next year because we're totally out of gravel just about. So. <clears throat> That's something that we need to have either this year or next year. And by the way, we need to, to look at that and get that damn gravel crush. It's working and we need it big time. So, now that's kind of what I had done here for what on the balance on that. So I just seen you had the um, the two miniature sheet in my in my box of Seattle, which I didn't look at on your end, but. You know what the negative with the bridge stuff makes it look kind of funny. Well, we've got to do that cash grant. Yeah, so, so the next week, we have the second phase of the revenue of $367. This, this is all estimates. We, we do not use period 10, 11, and 12 for the front page to get, come up with that every that line. Yeah, that's on top right here. She rounded it, and all we did is round it and off the numbers. So right here, between the balance and the revenue on the top is around $727,000 on top right here, this year. If you add this no, year... What, I, what I'm saying is the revenue, 367? Yes. When I look at the revenue for period 10, 11, and 12 estimates... Yes. It's not a, it, isn't it? She just rounded these numbers off. She didn't go exact, right. that's why. Okay. See, I knew you were going to ask that, but she rounded these <laughs> numbers off. And then, that's why we're just saying seven twenty seven. This is, a, this is just estimate. Yep. Well, this is pretty much exact what we are for balance right here, about seven twenty seven. You add these. If you add three sixty nine nine seven zero four, and you add ten done in twelve months, yeah. it'll be exactly what we're projected to get in. So it'd be a little bit more than seven hundred thirty thousand dollars actually. So the two hundred seventy five thousand you estimate for. Years, bills, year. What's included in that? What are you saying? On the second page, the bills, 
your juice is 175,000. You already yep. got your payroll, you're saying yep. that. See, what, what are you including in that 275? That's just projected for the rest of the, like if I have breakdown, uh, right. like Twin Valley bills, tire bills, anything that is above and beyond, like that mm -hmm. might happen in three months, like with machinery and breakdown, surprises, you know, that kind of thing. Basically, we got all the main stuff, the utilities, the oil, the fuel and propane in there. So technically, there's more money probably in the bills for the year. See, so that's, but that is how much between the bottom line, 106,000, the 275,000 with bills, that's actually in the good. So, anyway, so like the outstanding asphalt today, so we did some patching and paving, you know, last week and all that. So we have $45,685 left to pay for the stock for, for this next month, or for next week when we pay bills. And then we're open to, you know, the piles with the, with the um, trailer. And if there's something real bad, like yesterday, we had to go down County Road 4 and fix up a couple spots. I'm telling you, the semis on County Road 4 must be like 700 a day now. I mean, we got nothing but road tracks going all the way south on County Road 4. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which There's like five miles of bad road now coming, and it's all getting checkered, and it's coming out, like squishing out. If you drive it, there's like, um, like where Jill's mom and dad live down in there, there's a whole mile in there that's just like this now. And all these trucks that are running like yesterday and the day before, I mean, it's like the traffic number on that road, well, especially with Wilmot being fixed on the state, it's just totally, I mean, I bet you there's, <laughs> there's a thousand, at least a thousand trucks, you know, there's probably 500 trucks a day going on there. At least, <laughs> but when we got farther south, I had to fix a couple spots. They're not all legal, are they? No. <laughs> Wait, what? And you know, when I drove that that one spot we fixed yesterday, and literally would throw you in the ditch, going six fifty five miles down the road. So we had to go down our pavement, square it off, and fix it. And there's a lot of spots coming like that. That culvert now, yeah, by Beals, it was in last spring, you know. And yep. uh, gonna do anything they claim it's pulling apart well what it is is the ends pulling apart but they fell off on the end and technically years ago they didn't make it long enough so it's kind of right off the white line ways it's not anything that's going to happen far as caving in it's just that they fell off the ends they got to be put back together but they didn't have that clear zone when they put the culvert in the first place see it should have been long <clears throat> that way, when the ends fall off, there's only this much holding. At least it would have been out in the middle of the ditch and not on the edge of the road. Yeah. And that's the downfall. But I plan on putting that in yet this fall. But we have to lift up the road and we have to go on the cross. So we're not all the way down to 24, <laughs> if not by the state road. It begins the state's work, and now I don't want to do it anymore because we'll have a jam up on all the other roads and yeah. close it off. It only takes one day there, you know, towards the day. But we have to make sure that we're getting our ducks in a row at the state. Otherwise, we're going to have a thousand cars going on 24 and 9 going north to Wilmot. 49. They're all going to go that anyway, you know. So. But that's because what happened, it's concrete and it's the ends, the ends where the flares are just fell off on the ends and it's right off. But it's not, it's not where it's going to cave in because they did undermine her there, you know, from how it started. So, I just had some call on. Is the state going to give us any help for, on the floor for all that detour? No. Four or nine or nine. They kind of told you early on they weren't going to give us They, they, they give us all they're going to give us, and that was on County Road 34. Public Road. Um, would it do any good to reduce the speed, truck truck speed? No, it won't get over there. The next thing I have is, I have the, the hot sheet I gave you was a transfer from, <clears throat> from the landfill and from the jail to, to go to the highway. The top one is, uh, we took some metal out there, being teaser, you know, got that $85,000 worth of metal, you know, we brought metal from the yard, 
and he is the red dog, and we'll just keep track of what it is. It wasn't very hot. We had one ton of you know, metal, as far as that goes, um, so that was 100 bucks. So we put that on there just for whatever. So we had the rest of it was fuel and gravel, the metal taken out of the landfill there, and uh, the dozer and that stuff. So then we got rent for 100 bucks for the top here. The landfill to highway is $4,173.44, and then a transfer from the jail. The jail owes us for a little bit of fuel and some maintenance on the vehicles. That was only $69, so we'd like to have a motion to have that $4,243.06 transfer to the highway. So, uh, Any questions on that? Is there a motion by Carlson to make the transfer and second by Zempo? Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And then um, you did follow up before we left with these or about that um, scraper. DMI was supposed to come this morning from Aberdeen to fix on it again. We got two solenoids put on, that's fine. Both of them are running good. Um, but his truck broke down. He's got some issues with his deaf on the way over from Aberdeen. So they called me this morning and said they're going to try to be here tomorrow at the end of the week. So then we'll get the sun right down and we'll get to scrape the roll. And then once we get it rolling, we'll go from there at what we got for any problems in the back. So, so that's kind of on me. Just stand still right now because it's really hard. Okay. And, then, and luckily, like we said, we found that. Tire from Bates said they had to use one. I said, well, you can bring one and we'll, yeah, we'll see what it is. He said, yeah, you can have this tire for a little less than 300. Hey, as it keeps air and it's good enough. I mean, yeah. The tire is good enough and it's a good enough tire for what we use it for now to, to get all the ball rolling. We need to work on that and scraper. How much money do you suppose we got into it? I mean, up to this point, the scraper. Well, they had a one trip over with mileage from BMI and then his wage for that whole day. And then we got everything pretty much done. It was like, now there's a couple of solenoids that ain't much, a couple of little things that need to be done. And then whatever hours he spends the next day and traveling for you know, the A couple of 3,000 bucks or? Yeah, I'm not just going to be a few thousand dollars. I know I can't say. And, and that's just going to get us to a point where we make a determination whether you want to keep it or put more money into yeah. it. And Depending on how bad, if, if we have brakes that are hanging up, or if we have differential that's getting hot, we won't be able to determine that until we can cruise around a little bit with it. So yeah. It shouldn't be too much to figure it out once we get it wrong. So. I do have one approach permit. And this is for Corey Greenshoot. He wants to add on an approach off the Clear City Road, County Road 6. Um, they're going to use it to feed cattle in and out there, and they go in kind of a pasture land there. And so he's going to have to do it himself. It doesn't require us to do any of the work. We would waive the $50 because, um, you know, hire else to come and do the approach for him. All I had to do is make sure it does need a culvert, and the site distance was over a tenth of a mile from the top of the hill that you can still see. Because see that comes down to the state highway 10, to the stop sign that comes over the hill. So I had to check the distance, and I can still see from over a tenth of a mile. I can still see the stop sign and when they get built. You know I can still see them where they can be coming off the road, so the visibility is good. So we don't have no problem with it. Just have a motion to to have yeah. that put um, to have Corey be able to put that approach. In. Are we providing the culvert? No. Why are we waiting? Because we're only um, required for one access for a new track or a new dwelling. Okay. This is just an added on on the same totally track and on yeah. the same partial or whatever. So they've already got an access. They've right. already got okay. the fence. Why are we waiting to feed them? We always wait to feed because they have to do the work. But if we have to do the work, then we don't waive it because then we get the fifty dollars. Then we have to do the work if it was if it was that we had to do. It. Did you have some time in this though? Yeah, I had time, in, you know, to do that. But I do that for every approach. This is how our approach permit is, and that's always the groundwork I have to do. So, um, 
until we change it or whatever. There, there has no been no more fee on here. We've had a fifty dollar fee on these. Some uh, counties don't even do that, but um, we've been having a fifty dollar fee on it all the time. If 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 the statute is says we have to do it, so, but that's up to you guys to decide if you want to change. Yeah, there's time that I have to go there in certain areas and drive there and you know go over it all. So it's a possibility that I can change this to get some money back. And I'll give this to you down so you can write the description down. And, and uh, otherwise, everything looks good. Um, they do need a culvert, so if he puts 44 in, I gotta make sure that everything's put in later. Other than that, I guess. Is there a motion to approve that approach permit? Carlson, is there a second? Johnston. And then we're grappling today down on 31. We started on the end 31 south, and then um, we do have the other two mores going. We've had three mores going. Um, so in between what we've been doing on road work, now we're grappling down there because 31 needs it. We're going to spot grab that with the semi <coughs> for now, and then we're going to start going north from Latin North with the other ones. So we'll see how far yeah, that last gets us. Kind of rough on yeah, he said it broke up on the south end. I haven't been down there yet today, so. But down there. So. There's a motion by Don, second by Faye. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying no. Um, All right. Question. When we were talking about re, uh, or building a new shop out there, we talked about the possibility of uh, not having that tire facility and using. Uh, yeah. Twin Valley. Twin Valley. Twin Valley. Thank you. For the tires. Yeah. No. Is, is you know, obviously we're not going on that. Building way, it would make sense to, to switch and start doing that at Twin Valley this winter if we don't even have to eat that little piece of the shop. Yeah, but we have to eat it for a piece of We got a truck that stays one in there. We have to eat it. Oh, okay, so that, okay, I thought, okay, I thought you just We have to eat that because we have one of our sump pump trucks in there in the winter. Okay, but does it make sense to switch it at any point in time? If oh, yeah. Now as opposed yeah, to later? Does it make it easier for us because we don't have to be changing tires and let them do it? Yeah, well, Tim's been changing them and working on them and putting them on rims all the time as we speak. All right. All that all right so if there's no mess, so, I just wonder if there's a yeah, chance to no, do it now. Or not right, right now. Okay. Because all Tim's right. actually doing tires standing there. Okay. Because we have tires to put on rims. Well, we got to heat it in, you know, I guess it doesn't matter. So, yeah. Okay. I, and I did talk to uh, Justin, and he's going to give me the map that he did for the shots. Sure. And if we want to go forward, I said we'll talk to somebody about starting the ball rolling for something on that. I'm part of it, so. Okay. Did we ever get anything off of that bridge damage on County Road 15? No. So, we have to try to do a railing system on both sides or take the other one off on that little stretch, so. But I've had the report on my desk there and it hasn't changed. Nobody's gotten a hold of me from the Sheriff's Office. and. Pretty much a deal that just went on the wayside now, as far as on their end. So I don't know what you're ever going to do to try to collect it. How much, how much damage have, was actually done? I mean, they don't wise. have sufficient information for whatever this guy is. There's no It'll be a matter of time before we start hearing from Lewandowski again that nothing's being done about it. Um, the bridge is not. Guess what the damages were dollar wise? What would you guess? 
there's more than 100,000 bucks on that railing and all stuff like that to fix that railing. Well, so we've had, we've had an accident at Clark City Road and we're still getting money every month from that individual, you know, to make up for it. So we had to go out there and redo the whole railing system. It took a long time, a lot of effort to do that, so we got money from that. This thing here is, you know, maybe this, you know, like here, but the, the individual should be accountable. It's not. It's not in my hands. It's the uh, law enforcement saying it's not mine. You know, it's my duty to get over there and try to fix that and then cut it off and be done with it. But it's not my deal to go after whoever it was. So that's the whole deal. So I, I just think of how that one south of Peaver got handled, and you know, the insurance company got involved and. The report that I got from the Sheriff's Department didn't have any more information on it than what we already have. But do we know who the individual is? Yeah. And know how to get hold of them? Maybe turn it over to our state's attorney. Let him send it. That's what we did last time. Yeah. It was Faye, Kay, Nicholas, you know. I mean, that's one by what the handling is. There's a couple thousand dollars to collect it, we collected it. I would go for it. Yeah. <clears throat> would, would we make, would our guys make the repairs on that ourselves? I guess oh, I, would, right. I would schedule <laughs> that in half go ahead and fix it to keep track of the time and the expense. Yeah, we, so we're got, trying to get it so we know So we know what, what we've got to make a claim. Yeah. yeah. What I've been going for with it as soon as we get caught up. I mean, we've been doing this gravel and patching, and we got trimming to do and all this too, and we've got to take that and cut that and redo that. So, and then on the other side, there's nothing. So, it's like, uh, well, if you can't do it, at least write right up, write right up a repair yeah. quote to give to them so, they so we know it. what yeah. how, yes. exactly how much damage is there, right. man and materials, so forth. How do you do that? <clears throat> Try to get together with them. Other than that? Okay, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Keep the nice brother coming. Yeah. yeah. Got my boys. We're going to make a run up to see Giallo today. Very interesting. See what's happening up there. Somebody said that last week, I mean, not this last one, but before there was two guys up there plucking entrance fees. Absolutely. That's the This is the prime time. <laughs> we did, too, get the rest of a five year bridge plan back in the first district, so that's completely done. We were the first here. county to have ours in. Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, so good. anyway, I'll yeah. put that in the file just forgot about that. It was in my box that I had. We were waiting for him to send it back to us. So it's completely now. All right. Good Thank night. you. Thanks. Thank you. I gave you that um, information on the ARPA advisory assessment at the, I guess at the convention. They, the county's commissioner association has engaged um, <coughs> daily to provide consulting services regarding the use of the American Rescue Plan Act. And if, if we want to participate, we would have two thousand dollars, which would be taken out of would be taken out of the ARP money, and then. Any of the questions that we would have, we'd go through first planning district, and then they would they would deal with I Bailey just like um, we did for the COVID funds. We pay dues. We pay dues to the association. Yes, we do. Oh, okay, but I gave them money. Just curious. So the and my second question is: Did they get any of these funds? The association, right. county commissioner association. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's just like 
We pay dues for first district, and we expect them to do work for us. And they do. And they do, but you know, does it kind of, you know, getting our return on our dollar? I don't know. Maybe when we were doing our, you know, zoning ordinances in the time they had to spend, we got back. But it's just like, I don't know. It kind of hurts me a little bit that. You have to be a participating colony to get the answers. Yeah. Well, there they would be a consulting firm, and and possibly they would help guide us when we do have to fill out those reports that we have to fill out as a as an auditor that doesn't. You know, it, I don't. Know. I understand what you're saying, but I think the two or three thousand dollar investment would be it, good. It's if a we put, investment. Yeah, it's just like, a big reward. Having to pay for it, you know. Well, we take it out of the million dollars that we I, have. Yes, I know that. Yeah. That's just, you know. <laughs> They're only going to share the information with participating colleagues. I'm sure that, yeah. You know, like I said, that, that just. What is it like? First ticket, you realize this is beyond their this ability, is the so they just. Dish. This contracted with someone else. This is in first district that we're that's no not, the first district is saying that this is beyond what they're able to do, they need to go to something like I that. This is the county commissioner association. Is well, okay, okay, I'm sorry. County commissioner association. Okay. And you know it's just something to think about. I guess I would be all for I'm not saying I'm not for it, it's just, you know, I've only been contracted, you know. You smile and my gut reaction yeah, too is that it should be a benefit is already uh, as a member. You're right. And, and $2,000, I mean, how, how do they arrive at that? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, uh, how many hours oh, do you yeah, get for that? Do you get any? One of the girls will them in. And then you can't you can't well, pose your questions. Just, the only ones that I need to get to more of the uh, so the older the older cars. So they don't have a choice, but it's they got they got a hundred, well they wouldn't have a hundred, but I don't know. How many counties they got? Well there are sixty six counties, you know, in the association. Well they all belong. Well, they all belong to the County Commissioner Association, yes. I don't know if they all applied. Some of them did not apply for the ARP funds because, um, just because of the fact that it was paying and... Well, even even if they, they had 50 of them more, that's $100,000. To probably answer the same question from county to county to county. It just seems like it should be a benefit because, like you say, we pay about 20 grand already into mm -hmm. first district. And I don't know, I'm going to guess maybe 500 bucks to the county association, or yeah, probably a little bit more, more than that. that. Yeah. So, um, Good morning, Tyler. <laughs> Should I leave? <laughs> um, the census, we're at 76 today. Uh, today, like every Tuesday, is court day. Uh, and then I'm working with uh, Dylan uh, Kirkmeyer, the state's attorney, and our jail administrator to alleviate some of the, the, the stress that's been causing the jail with the population. Partly being caused by the court being so backed up. Um, we have inmates that have, you know, that are in our custody, waiting on outcomes of cases that aren't going to be heard till December, some even April. Uh, but if they're already under, they're already under the supervision of the Department of Corrections. We're going to start working with them to start transporting people down to the state pen while they wait for their case to be heard. 
So it'll be a way, it'll be a way, it, it kind of works both ways. You know, one, they're able to be down there and working on programs if they, they choose to be. Uh, and sitting some of their time down there, it alleviates part of the issues for us. Um, and to be honest, some of the, the biggest issues that we deal with in the jail are some of the people that are already on, under the department. So, uh, and we're working with parole services on, on that stuff too, so. Would these be still that are unavailable for bail or just can't afford bail? Or both? Typically their bail is set, set either high or the Department of Corrections has put a detainer on them until their next cases oh, okay. uh, it is done. Um, so in those cases, they're, they're already under the Department the Department of Corrections board. So if we transport, we build the Department of Corrections for that transport. So we already get a lot of, it doesn't really, any of that transportation fees or any of that, we do all of that reimburse the rest of the state. So it doesn't, it doesn't cost us anything. In fact, it makes things a lot easier on us. Yeah, oh my God. You know, we're, we're usually back and forth down there at least once every other week. So, you know, if we're able to look out ahead and say, hey, this person has a case in December 30th, well, we know that sometime between now and now, we'll have been there a few times, so sure. we can get them back up here, so. Because even though they're under the Department of Corrections, we, you know, it's still costing us for their jail stay. Well, they're here. Yeah, yeah. So wouldn't get, and the Department of Corrections don't pay us for that. Right. Well, while we're talking about transports and whatnot, we have one. We had a bill come through in Grand County. Yeah, right here. Yep. Yep. Can you explain that? Yep. This was for a uh, this was for a mental health transport. Somebody that's a resident of Roberts County that got picked up by an ambulance. I'm guessing an ambulance service. Um, that's far enough south that they transported them to Millbank, and then they called. They called and just basically asked. They said, "Do you have somebody that's willing to come here right now and transport this person down to <coughs> Avera, or would you like us to do it for them?" And we were short-handed. We were short-handed that day, so I said, "Well, if you just want to do it and fill it to us, that'll work best for us this day." Now, this is. When I talked to uh, Sheriff Owen, he had said that this is something that other sheriff's offices do. Um, so this was news. This was news to me about building building the county that 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 there was a resident in. Um, so it's something going forward that that we're going to look at doing. So. It'll just be our standard operating procedure that if we have somebody that comes into our custody in Roberts County, but they are a resident of somewhere else, we will call that sheriff's office, make them aware that they are going to be taking a transport to whatever destination they would be going, give them an opportunity to either come and do it themselves, or we will send them the bill for it for the service. Just, just kind of a way of streamlining it streamlining it for us so that we're not always the one catching them. In, in, in the past, we've had some pretty good uh, relationships in terms of maybe waiving some jail fees for neighboring counties and whatnot and providing mutual aid. And what comes to mind, Tyler, is the, the large gathering that, that occurred down at, at the wharf and that if did Grant County respond at all to that, or they did they, they were told the deputy that was on duty, um, who was also our our one of our backup deputies, um, he was on duty over there. And he was told to sit at the county line and just say anything that was coming back, coming back into Grant County. So okay. we try, we try, okay. and said I'm already. Otherwise, he was he was he was would have came out and came out and worked. Okay. Um, I know the, the individual that you spoke with, I know that uh, Deputy Dean went down there and he talked to him that night, he talked to a couple other residents down in the area. They were happy that we were down there, but it was more than one person could handle, um, and, and he 
he <coughs> he basically walked around down there and alleviated a lot of the problems that were just occurring just like having a presence here. Yeah. Took, took an officer off the road that you know to prevent any sort of you know traffic enforcement, but um, hopefully in the future. If we have something like that going on, we'll have to, if we can know about it ahead of time, we're able to, to prepare for it a little bit better. But, um, we just didn't have the time to, or, to organize to, to be there. Yeah, I think it got larger than the sponsors even anticipated, but yeah. I did get a call back on Thursday, the following day, that they appreciated yeah. the presence there and that it actually helped. Uh, estimates were 3,600 people. Mm -hmm. So, it's, yeah. so yeah, yeah, and in the future, if those things come up, don't hesitate to call and, and let me know ahead of time. If, if you know of something going on in a community where they might be having large gatherings, you know, we're not there to we're not there to pick on anybody or anything, but just like you said, just having the presence can sometimes alleviate a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and sometimes the, the landowners that are that are nearby. They're the ones that get wrapped up into everything as well, just because that's the way that that cookie kind of crumbles. But, so, can I ask thing we're talking mental health? Can I ask a question on that? Um, with our telemedicine thing in Avira, the people who want to do the one-on-one, -on -one, if they decide to go, is that usually voluntary? My question is: if somebody brought up to me is if they if they won't go, who's doing the emergency order for de detention? Is there being paperwork done? Yes. Yes. If they won't go, if they won't go and they're not going under the under the guise of the, the hospital, we we end up having to do the mental hold paperwork as far as it being an involuntary committal. You're doing so the sheriff's office has to do it. Yep. Yep. Okay. So there is paperwork. Yes. If they voluntarily go, there wouldn't be any of that. There's, if they voluntarily go, it will be all hospital paper, paperwork. It's all done in the hospital. Law enforcement doesn't have any. Um, they have a, the social worker at CDP would then go through the, the paperwork. Okay, so if you're out on the scene and determine this person needs to go and voluntarily, is CDP involved? If they go voluntarily? Yes. Yes, because if somebody decides that we're out on the scene and someone says, you know, I don't know, it could be a multitude of things, but if, if I get to the point where I, I say, hey, I don't feel comfortable with you just going home, I'm going to need you to be seen, okay. I basically explain to them, you have the option. I would much rather you just go up to the hospital and I will take you there um, and I'll make sure that you get seen by a doctor uh, and, and clear then you might very well go home after that. Or, like I said, you need to be seen. So if you don't want to be seen voluntarily, I'm going to have to take you into custody, and then you will be seen in the next 48 hours, which will be in custody until that time. All right. So if you do the telemedicine, you're still taking him to the hospital? If we do the our iPads that yes. we have, yes. we don't have to. No, okay. we can that, that's my, where my issue is coming from. Yeah, we can do it right on the side of the road or right at somebody's house. OK. So if they go voluntarily, there is. They're still not in custody. Right, so there's no paperwork. There's no paperwork they for us. All go voluntarily. Then we have to we have to read them the involuntary mental hold paperwork the, the second they walk into the sheriff's office or walk into custody because we are essentially putting them in custody against their against their will for the purposes of them being a danger to themselves or others. So the mental health board, Mary Cameron, or. Right. They will end up seeing that paper. Okay. Um, right. yep. It'll end up getting to them down the road. Um, we fill out the mental, uh, the mental health paperwork, and eventually they would sign it. Um, it. It's much similar to a search warrant. Is there enough probable cause for them to believe that this person is a is a danger to themselves or others? Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, we talked about the uh, precision precision kiosk last week. Uh, when I when I contacted them, they are going to send one of their main 
uh, representatives out here on the 12th, so next Tuesday. Um, they're going to have a demonstration ready for us out at the jail at 11 o'clock. I've been kind of, I've been kind of troubleshooting with them as well uh, on some of the, all of the services they're capable of providing. I've talked to the Cuyahoga County uh, Jail Administrator. I uh, just talked to him yesterday. He says they love the machine, um, and he said they, we don't use it, so we don't use it for nearly what it's capable of. Um, it's capable of so much more than, than what we use it for. We just use it for our PBT and UA system. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, but he said you can set it up to use it for just about anything that you would like. Excuse me. Uh, I, I did talk to uh, Craig Archer with probation services here, and, and I showed him what it is and what it might be able to do for them as well. Um, so it's something that they're interested in as well, and they're gonna, uh, he's gonna come and come to the demonstration as well and see how they can possibly use it for some of their services. Um, we set the costs in the machine. So if probation services want to use our machine, they, if, if we wanted to set it up in a way where somebody that they have on their uh, caseload needs to come out one time a month, we can set it up in the machine. The machine will actually send a text alert to their phone, um, letting them know when they have to arrive at the machine to do their whatever it is that they have to do, even if it's just a check-in. Um, they will do that. They will pay the fee that we have allotted for that. Um, if it is some sort of UA type situation, uh, your analysis situation, they will pay for their cup ahead of time, and then they will hand that receipt to one of our jail staff who will then they can go through that, that process. So, um, there's also um, the possibility of using it for uh, like pre-trial uh, services. Um, say if, if the judge wanted to let somebody out prior to um, an arraignment of some sort and he would be able, instead of holding them in jail until the day that he's arraigned and, and goes to prison, it would give them the opportunity of doing something like you know, letting them out as long as they check in twice a day. Um, and it might just be as easy as them coming in, letting it take a photo of, of them and proving that they were there. And another way of us trying to manage our in-custody inmates that are, that are stuck inside of our jail, because we don't currently have a lot of those services available. We just this would just roll. This is just another checkbox that this thing would kind of have. So uh, I told them that you guys would have some questions. I told them that probation would have some questions when when they came up. So they're gonna they're gonna prepare for some of that. So. Do you think probation services would have funds available to contribute towards the input cost? What what I was kind of told was that. Uh, their funds are pretty are pretty limited. So as far as as far as the setup of the machine and putting the putting the machine in our facility, probably not going to happen. But as far as uh, like I said, we're able to set the set the cost that somebody would have if they came in and, and used our facility for that. So we would be able to recoup that way. And that's what you so don't have to pay them. And we don't pay them. So it's all right. it's profit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Yep, and we'll just keep trying to come up with creative ways of like, using utilizing the machine as much as we as much as we can. So uh, I did bring uh, quotes for the vehicles. Uh, we did get a hold of land motors uh, and for that uh, the Ford Interceptor that they have out there. Theirs is a six cylinder. Um, it would end up the base cost without some of the, the minor things that you would have add to it, like the engine block heater. It comes to $37,110. 
which is about $400 less than the V8 Tahoes. So they're pretty. The Explorers really jumped up. I remember a couple of years yeah. ago they took up about a four or $500 jump. Yeah. A thousand. So the, the vehicle that we have on, the, the Tahoe that we have on hold right now is priced at $37,513. Their MSRP on all those are 44,008. And where did you say that was located? That one is going to be in uh, Carl Emergency Vehicles in Des Moines, Iowa. And they said that they're running out of vehicles, but they do. They do have a gray, the gray one that they're holding for us right now, and then if we wanted, we just need to let them know soon if we want uh, a second one as well. They have another one in white that they would be able to get. So. How does your vehicles, what's your preference, the top of the the floor? Um, I would probably, if I had to make a choice between the two, I would probably pick the top it's had a little bit. It has a little bit more space in it. Um, has a lot. It has a lot better trunk space in it than than the than the Fords do. Uh, I've had. I haven't had any real bad luck with with either one of them. So um, I know that uh, Dade County just got uh, one of the new Tahoes, and uh, they really they like it. <coughs> but I'm not partial to either. Well, well, I, I guess, I guess what I would, yeah, they'd, they'd be able to, um, the one, the one they said they would probably be able to get us by the end of the, by the end of this year, and if we wanted the second, um, it would probably, probably be in the first quarter of the, of so these will be 22s then? Yeah. Oh, both of them? Yeah. Okay. We did, we would. Right that. Well, we go to Sioux Falls every other week. You could hit Jack from there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How far from Sioux Falls do you think it'd be? No, no, no. Pass, pass. Mm -hmm. Distance from here to Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Distance from here to Des Moines, Iowa. That's an all day. That's an overnighter. That's, that's a straight up. Uh, 437. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Back to 150 on that. 250 or That's all I have. Somebody else got something for me. You want to make a decision on the vehicle? I could make a decision on one. I guess then, did we have the budget for two? Or I missed that day you guys were talking about this. Well, I think I think what what we should consider is do maybe one of the new ones where we've got um, we've got an offer from the insurance company on the wrecked one that's out there. Perhaps earmark that for a surplus vehicle when that comes in up here. Up for up for discussion. We talked about maybe taking the one vehicle under out of the cares of funds. Right. That, you know, the first ones we got because we're still sitting with a million and almost four hundred thousand there. Okay. All right. And that, you know, and then maybe the second one could come out of the budget or something. If we're not going to get it until next year, <coughs> so until after the first, probably or that the, that the second one would be available. 
Yeah, they'd probably put a hold on it for us if we were in some sort of agreement to purchase. But we we do kind of what we did at the beginning of this year. Well, under no fault of their own, it seems like with as much mileage that occurs and as much driving that occurs, they seem to get wrecked. <laughs> And it's a lot easier to swallow a, a wrecked $5,000 vehicle than it is a wrecked $37,000 vehicle. It's the way I look at it, anyway. So I, I can understand rotating some of this old stuff out of there because you've got one, two, three, four of them with 200,000 miles. But if we have access to something that's a little less expensive and it's out and about all the time and deer and all that kind of stuff that gets in the way, bridges and whatever. Personally, I'd, I'd like to see a new one and then even though we can afford to do it, it's just a fact that this stuff is almost disposable. Wreck it and send it to the salvage yard. The two towels you got here a while back, are you using those? Right one is one is being used regularly. Um, that is one of our current deputy vehicles. The second has been um, just being used as a spare. It probably, I don't think it's even gotten an oil change in the time it's been with us. So it seems to be pretty reasonable vehicles. Though, the ones yeah, they've they've worked they've worked well. Um, they just the one, you know, they work well for what we need them for. The one downside is, of course, you know, when you're getting them, they're already at. 120,000 miles. Yeah. Um, so it's it's, it's, it's the occasion. Long. Yeah. 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 Um, these here, if you get a good one, you're going to be able to get better. A couple of these old ones in? Or? Yes. Um, you know, and that's one of the that's one of the potential benefits of the SUVs is it gives us. A little bit more options once we start rotating some vehicles out because of their because of their size. You know, with a pickup, you know, in our pickups right now, um, when they were purchased, have single cages in them, so they're only able to transport one person, uh, which is it, it's kind of a pain. Um, I'm sure it was more of a forethought than anything else, but. Um, when, when you start to share a phone share for system. Yeah, I, I know. I'm no, sorry. I thought that I just you know, but as you start to as you start to to, to rotate those down, you know, for our correction staff to use, they're only able to, to transport one person. But doing a doctor's appointment, that's 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 fine. Um, but if you have to do anything out of town, like uh, this Friday when we're leaving we have to take the van because we're in we're gonna transport seven. Um, down to the state head. So, you know, and typically it's it's more common for us two or three, you know, and so that's why our, our SUVs, our, those Ford Explorers, were so handy is three people can fit them, I wouldn't say the most comfortably, but comfortably enough yeah. um, for what we need them for. So, you know, like we still have, we're still using the, the Impala for our in-town, some of our in-town transportation and things like that. It's been, it's been perfectly capable of doing some of those, doing some of those things. Um, but they, they do. The unfortunate thing is, is by the time they get back to, to the jail side, is they've been, they've been driven pretty, pretty hard through lots of weather and, um, and things like that. I don't have a problem with the first deal, but the second deal, I kind of like your idea with, for the used one. Primarily, I think of two, I mean, one of the things that, that James talked about was the, the camera situation at the jail. He kind of said that they, some would need to be replaced, some would need to be added to. He looked at a bill there, like 45 grand, which we probably didn't budget for this year. So, we, are we going to have things like that that are going to come up and we would need the money that we might spend on a second brand new vehicle to apply to some of those expenses? Are there more of those coming? We still don't know yet. In those, in those, that, that, uh, that camera, uh, you know, looking at those cameras, that would be, you know, I guess when I look at that, it's, that's putting us in the perfect world. 
we're able to, if we were able to put cameras in, in all the most ideal places in the jail that right now we've learned over the course of um, over the last years of that jail, um, areas that you know were an afterthought of maybe there should have been this year or that year, or, you know, some of the, even the areas where the that the jail was originally designed to be used for aren't used for those things anymore, and some of those things have have, have changed. Um, so, you know, and when I when I talked to James about looking at some of those things, you know, it's it's if if we have the opportunity to to look at something like that, where would where would be the priority areas for us to either add cameras or or things like things like that? Well, let me ask you this way: I guess if, if you had the opportunity to get a, a brand new one for thirty-seven thousand, or a used one for five grand, like we just got the dollars, or add additional cameras to the tune of up to forty-five thousand dollars, James, which which would you rather have? Ah. And that's probably not, I'm putting you on the spot. A car, probably, a, a car would probably be in our best interest from the standpoint of if, if we lost another, we would be in a pretty, we would be in a lot tougher spot. Um, and then the other thing is adding, an, adding a newer vehicle now gives us a better, uh, better capability of rotating, putting less on cars, because right now we end up having um, two cars or one car that's getting, you know, two drivers. So it might get more than just a single deputy driving it every week uh, and things like that. So, you know, I think the, I think as far as the camera, some of the camera situations go, you know, those are some things that Replacing some of the ones that we currently have, I think we could get by. I think we could get by pretty well under what that what that quote was. I think the biggest addition in that quote was all of the additional the additional cameras added because I think it was I want to say it was an additional camera in each cell block. Um, putting a camera up away from the, the doorway that the jailers use, shining or video taping back towards that doorway. Because right now you have one right above the doorway, so you can see into the room, but you can't see what's going on. And a lot of times the, the incidents tend to <coughs> That's just my... Sense. And I don't work in I don't work in the jail like those guys do, so they would probably have a different opinion than me. Um, when we had the conversation on the cameras, I thought there was something to a possible plan. Uh, we're have... looking at we're looking at some more grants that started to, to come out for the for this next year. Uh, so I know James was I know James was looking into some of those. I don't know where I don't know where they're at. I'll I mean, like here we see you know, two cars and upgraded cameras, you know, it was one or the other. But you know, like I said, we, we got a lot of that CARES money. I don't have a problem spending the CARES money. You know, we, we look like we're sitting on it being cheap, but I know we were talking about you know, upgrading next door. The, the, the key it's supposed to go a long way the money we got left. Well, and then, then if we do something with the shop, too, I mean, that, that needs up with a lion's share. But uh, I, I guess I'd be for sure on one vehicle and I'm sitting on the fence on the second side. <laughs> American recovery, yeah. you know, funds. What we could spend that on. I wish we did. Yeah. You know, Everybody make, does. Yeah. We make our decisions a little easier. Yeah. You know, and now they provide us a website, but oh, uh, I might go look at it. But it's probably a hundred pages. Yes. It's long. What's the state going to do with all their money they've got? Well, we don't. No one knows. Ask some around. You know, that's the deal. You want to buy My my understanding of the the ARPA money would be that looking at the two things we're talking about spending it on, we're probably going to be way more likely to be able to spend it on something inside of the jail facility than you will be on a vehicle. I don't think... Yeah, because the vehicle's kind of regular, day-to-day, yes. -day, you got to have it in the yes. camera door. Once it'll be 
a 10 year upgrade or whatever. So I'm trying to you know, and that's where looking at it, like like I know James sent you guys the information on that, that, that barcode system, that scan system, you know, something like that that, that tries to reduce person to person contact more and more. I think you'd have a lot easier time. Yeah. If we spend money out of the AR, the, the American Recovery Act, how often do we have to report, make a report on that? It's like a quarterly report that we have to do. Right. That's well, the second set of funds. Yeah. yeah. And where I'm coming from is if we made a decision to go forward with uh, the cameras or this barcode thing, we could just pay the bill and then time to decide, okay, it's going to come out of this fund or that fund? I suppose you could, as long as we know what we can spend that on. Yeah. I don't but know. At this point, we don't, but maybe... I think you better tread lightly on spending that... 30 days from my... But I, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And we would want to yeah. dip into that one at all, to know what we can spend it on. Unless you want to, you know, pay it back. It was done the way they did it, but that's the what? federal government. That would be appropriate money, and not necessarily what you can't spend. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's federal government. Yeah. That may be great. It would be decent if you get 4% or 5% interest on the but you get the 10% percent. So it's not making you any money. We're going to have money available. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
See, Tyler, one question. When, when you send the, uh, the van to uh, Sioux Falls with seven yep. uh, inmates, do you, do you have two COs right along? Or? Yes, and one armed. At least okay. one armed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that's what I was wondering. So yep. Appreciate it. Yeah, and then we, we reflect that with our, with our billings and those up to the other agencies that are involved. We reflect the fact that there were hours from two, from two employees that were involved in the transport. Okay. Yep, and we just we just recently certified uh, two reserve deputies uh, as well as uh, Braden Casa um, to do. He qualified for us so that he can do uh, armed transports as well. Good. So good to hear. And he was actually going to do the one this Friday. Uh, it just for the pen they had to have him there by five four or five o'clock. And so it just didn't work with his work hours. But um, when we do like our, our, our female transports, they're overnight over to Brown County, they'll be able to help us with, with those because we take two on those as well. Good. So. Doesn't that kid have enough to do? That's what I, <laughs> some, of, some of us are glad for punishment, right? <laughs> so you are right. glad that he's helping out. Wait for the day vehicle now or what? Pull the trigger on one. And okay. I think, uh, which yeah. Side which, which, which one is it going to be? The Tahoe. I think okay. the Tahoe. Maybe you can work a deal to have them bring it as far as Sioux Falls or something. We may. We'll have. I'll have. We'll have uh, rendezvous there. We'll make some contacts with them and see what they'd be willing to. How they'd be willing to maybe help us out. Yeah. Ways so. out there. So is there a motion to approve that? By Carlson. Is there a second? I'll second. Johnson. Discussion. What fund are we taking this out of? me. Well, you we budgeted. We have a budget for, for a new car this year? And it's, it's budgeted. For next year, there is. For next 20, year, 20, next yeah. year. Yeah. No. You think we'll get it before the end of the year? Um, yeah. I, I don't know if we'll get it before the end of this year or not. Oh, okay. For the discussion, then. I don't know. 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 Motion carries. Looking good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So you probably won't be here the next week. Huh? So no, I'll, I'll, get you, I'll meet you guys right, right out there. They were going to get here. They said they'd show up about 1030 and you start getting the machine set up so we're ready to get you guys back. You want to set up? Yeah. yeah you just, if you guys want to come on. We're going out to the jail yeah. rather than Tyler. The kiosk demonstration. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, but it might have to happen. Yeah. 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 So the speed limit thing? Oh, yes. Okay. That's not a common thing. Siskin Township needs to do a resolution and they need to advertise it for two weeks in the The Siskin Township is not a common thing because it's a township. Right, I don't need for that. Well, Pam's on the board. Okay. Um, Don on these uh, appreciations that only Geary was supposed to be able to? No. No. That's not what it. No, it's what we're Wait, wait. Is that yeah. something that can be discussed in open? Because uh, Dylan didn't want to say anything. Yeah, and then just dis disregard, disregard. I just. No, it's, it's the type of. Petition. No, no, I, I thought way back when you said that Gary, Gary Sheldon, the one who took out the petition, so only he could collect no. the signatures. No, I'm no. There's several different Yeah, yeah, okay, I understand that. On any petition, if, if I want to circulate a petition for whatever, I can circulate it. I have to circulate it, get the signatures, and I have to sign it. Yeah, but okay. it still can be for you know the same thing. You have five different people circulating these, which is what I'm noticing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, okay. So well, no. you then you have to be careful with that. Some, I, not, I don't know if that happened in this case, but some of them say, well, I'll leave the petition here in the bar. <coughs> You no, come back again later. Like that, you have to be there. You, if you're searching, to witness. You have to search for it. Yeah, okay. That has happened here, but it's been like 20 some years ago. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm not mentioning any. Exactly. Oh, really? I'm surprised it's in the signatures, actually. And that's why I'd, I'd bet money that it went to a vote in the past.
So I mean, that is a little conflicting thing, and, and maybe they, they maybe they should do ten hours. Maybe that's yeah, because you know, it's right here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, here and here, and it's like. Well, they said they only earn eight, but you make them take ten. It's not consistent. Yeah, it should yeah. be consistent. Right, exactly. So, I have a, I have a question on a part-time person. Um, Part-time person, do they get paid the holiday hours if they're only working 29 hours a week? What's that call? Our employee policy is I thought we would address that, doesn't it? I mean, we do. I don't, uh, I don't have my... This is true. Yeah. <coughs> that was it. Because... I think they should be all of them. Well, I didn't think so either, but that was the question, so well, that's why I'm bringing it to you. Yeah, no, it's right. Because we'll have one, two, three, four, probably five holidays until the end of the year. Oh, I get you guys get that much time off? Holy crap, when do you work? You're darn right. And I'm taking Monday off, too. Me too, then. I'm not coming, I'm not coming. <laughs> Everybody was informed, but Jill may be coming tomorrow. Oh. Eligibility, is that it, Nye? Page 38. Are you mailing that card to the house? Yes. That's where Jill's house is. Oh, is that right? I don't like, I don't like to mail them to the hospital because then if they get the room, they get moved, you know, in or out of the hospital sometimes. That's where I've been sending my stuff. Well, that's a tangible It says regular yeah. part time employees that do not work on any of the above holidays shall not receive compensation. Okay, so according to the definition of regular part time employee. Okay, yeah, yeah, this, you work on how do you get paid for it. You don't work it. You don't. Right. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what we figured, but I just. <coughs> yeah. Custodian helper? Well, so. that was the one that brought it up. I didn't realize until Thursday that he was going to be gone this whole week. And uh, Matthew is available right now. And, uh, because he's, he can't go into the, into the guards like he was going to because he just had his appendix out. Mm. So, just be for this week. And he's here. It's kind of nice. Yesterday he was washing windows and. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I guess that was. <clears throat> you need that in the form of a motion to have him temporarily? Sure. A week or whatever you're doing or what? Is it a week that you need him? Yes, because Doug was touched on this week. Second, second by Do you want to report a wage? It's 13. 13 tennis. You're good with that? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, and then that 2000 we can pay that, run that through, you said? If they give us an answer for the month, we'll give you 3000 on that. I'll give you an answer for a thousand bucks. If you could take it to the bank and spend our million dollars. Do we have anything else to discuss? No, I think so.
The only thing you have I need you to sign is the two ordinances. I didn't have a signature page. You don't need any motion on it. Oh, this is for 31 and 32, yes. which we've already had action on. So. And we just need a motion to adjourn. Don, second. Tom. Don, okay, we're signal by the saying. Aye. Thank you. Don, thanks. You didn't get to use your speakers. I was all ready to respond to this live stream is brought to you by Dakota Pond and Thrift for all your pond needs, Countryside Inn Assisted Living and Memory Care in Rossalt for your family is our family, First Savings Bank of Sisseton, use our online banking to save you time, Stilson Service in Sisseton with Marathon Fuels, Tri-State Water, Sisseton for all your water needs, water softeners and reverse osmosis right here in Sisseton. And of course, the Sisseton Courier, where we do more than the weekly newspaper. Thanks for watching and have a great day.